The EduTech guys present a conversation from our live coverage of FETC in Orlando, Florida from Thursday, January 25th, 2018. Enjoy the program. Uh, my name is uh, Ryan Schaff. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm an assistant professor of, uh, professor of educational technology at Notre Dame, Maryland University. Um, I also teach at Johns Hopkins School of Education. Awesome. Um, I came down to FETC uh, to um, present a session on digital game-based learning. Uh, so using games in the classroom. Um, uh, it goes along, corresponds with uh, a book I wrote called Game On. Um, it's uh, produced through Solution Tree. Uh, it had a great turnout, uh, standing room only. Uh, awesome. Absolutely filled to the brim. Um, so it's very successful and um, getting a lot of uh, reaction on Twitter and a lot of questions and looking forward to sitting down and answering them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you created more work for yourself, but it's good work. It, it is. is. Yeah. That's kind of where what we're hearing, you know, with the FETC conference is a great way in the middle of the year to re-energize, you know, what you're doing and make it through the rest of the school year. Mm -hmm. But um, so let's talk gamification, our game-based learning, yeah. digital games. We, 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 we had a show on the difference in those two. People think they're the same thing. And, That's correct. And they are not. They are not the same At thing. all. And um, so let's talk about, take us through kind of a summary of what you presented so our listeners can kind of understand, you know, what they missed out on and um, where you're heading inside Game On using digital games for teaching, learning, and assessment. Sure. Um, so when it comes to using games in the classroom, some uh, educators really do see that it's a very compelling way of teaching their students. They see the student motivation, they see the engagement, uh, they see the twitch speed, uh, they see that it accesses the excitement that they, uh, they have outside of school uh, for this medium that's extremely powerful. I mean, we have two billion gamers in the world uh, and it just keeps growing. Um, unfortunately, educators, they just don't have a great deal of time to do all this research and try and find these games and figure out how to incorporate them into the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the learning game industry is now trying to help teachers by creating games that are kind of transparent. You understand exactly what they teach and how it's taught. They're also trying to create materials around those games so this way it actually fits into their curriculum. Uh, and that's kind of like what Game On does. Uh, it first, it does define what's the difference between game-based learning and gamification and gameful design and all these buzzwords. Right. Uh, that way, so just people just understand that there's a there's different ways. Not saying that one is better than the other. They're just different. Yeah. Um, you'll have one like Classcraft, which is I consider it kind of um, evolving beyond gamification, almost into what they call gameful design, where they're taking all of these instructional or all these activities and they're filtering them and creating them and putting them into this almost different type of reality right i consider that gamification but they're also then now that they've incorporated quests into it it almost becomes personalized learning ah. and get more gameful design than gamification but then you also have places like teacher gaming and amplify and brain pop all these places are creating and, and curating digital games right. and talking about how you can teach them in the classroom or how you can teach them at home. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting because I'm starting to see teachers brought more and more into the conversation. Yeah. And that's what really makes me excited about it. Yeah, yeah we've seen a lot of that too. We've seen mm -hmm. a lot of teachers that are here for these companies mm -hmm. that have mastered it, are mastering the, the ability to do that. So when, when a teacher's looking to evaluate a game or, or you know, decide decide not a digital game that's going to work in their classroom tips on doing yeah. that you know especially when it comes to like assessment or evaluation you know when they're evaluating them for assessment yeah in uh in the book i'm sorry i'm that's plugging okay. away no no, no that's, that's what we're right. here for yeah, absolutely. Um, i make it a, a i try to create a, almost like a checklist on how to pick uh most educators have to use their curriculum so they start with the standards and they work on how exactly what do exactly do i have to teach uh but that curriculum doesn't really include the how. Mm -hmm. So what I try to get them to do is to focus on what they're looking for and seeing if there's games that are out there on the market. I also start by telling them what's out there, what type of platforms they might be able to bring into the classroom, which ones are probably going to be more beneficial for them and ones that are probably going to be more um, just uh, you know, kind of like a pipe dream. 
Uh -huh. uh, sure. Know, we're not going to have uh, consoles in every single classroom as right. nice as that would be. It's just not practical because there's only so many commercial games out there that will actually teach something. Right. Um, then it goes through the process of let's think about what you want to teach, how you're going to teach, and uh, how that learning is going to also be assessed. Um, it also talks about um, the technical aspects, what to think about when trying to actually deliver the games to the students, uh, you know, the practical aspects, the, um, you know, what, how many machines are you going to use um, or devices, uh, how many copies of something you have. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, also, how big your class is. Uh, sure. So all of these types of things are, are taken into account in this, mat in this checklist that I've included in Game On. And, and I've even given it free uh, away free uh, to the people at FETC, so this awesome. way they can they can use it. It's like the little you know the popcorn at the movies. I try to yeah, that's I wish right. I, you know a lot of people <laughs> wish they would just give that away, but they don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. I was gonna say so you actually charge them a fortune then if it's the popcorn at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I should, but no, right? But absolutely no. not. Um, well, I, I'm a gamer. That's what's one of the things that I like to do when I'm not doing this kind of stuff. Um, and so in, in my brain, when I'm looking at you know, the title of your book and, and looking over some of the things that, that are shown here and things that we've been talking about here, of course, there are certain games that run through my head. And I'm like, and I'm, of course, I'm thinking more along the lines of, well, let me, let me back up just one second. So in my head, when I think games and education, my brain goes in two directions. One is the games that are designed by education companies that theoretically and or truthfully uh, teach whatever it is they're teaching and or help students learn whatever it is they're learning, they are uh, purposeful, mm -hmm. um, frankly, not necessarily fun. Then you have games that are commercially available that are fun, but they're not necessarily teaching you as their main goal. Mm -hmm. So then... I'm going to use Minecraft as an example because it's at this point kind of the pinnacle of commercial games that, that you know, got flipped into education. You mentioned, mentioned teacherlearning.com. Mm -hmm. um, and so is, is your focus on that sort of aspect where it's a, it's a commercial um, entertainment game that here's how, like, in the case of Minecraft with Minecraft EDU, here's how you can take this game and apply it to what you're learning in class. Or is it more the other side? It's more of the here are the education games that will actually help and entertain and educate your students. I get what you're talking about. So commercial games versus learning games. You know, you're you are starting to see um, the barriers start to disappear. There are True. a lot of fun games out there. Um, that are what they also call serious games. They're sure. really meant for education, although they're not developed to be entertainment, um, or and also sometimes they even call it edutainment. Right. Um, they're starting to see that where the, the learning games are becoming as fun, and it, it is sometimes it is a lot of trial and error. Um, and some places even call it uh, was it chocolate covered broccoli, or they cover, you know, you're just you're you're making something fancy you're creating something that you think is fun and engaging but really it's just a, a glorified worksheet or something like right that. right that's not the case a lot of these games are fun they're um, extremely well put together they'd be impre they're impressive productions uh, they look good but at the same point in time uh, they're also teaching and they're also assessing um, Carl Kapp, who's probably been to FETC um, before, uh, he is a principal, I'm sorry, he is a professor uh, in Pennsylvania, and he's classified games as two, learning games as uh, t two types, testing games and teaching games. Okay. Um, teaching game, of course, teaches you some sort of new concepts or, or, or helps you to develop a new skill. Uh, a testing game is great at testing what you already know. Yeah. I find the really good games the ones that can kind of do both. Yeah. They can yeah. both teach and test you. Um, so when it comes to the types of games out there, you really have to evaluate how you're going to use it. Think about how it's going to be used. Because some games are real short games. They're quick. You're going to learn them or the kids are going to be done playing with them. Or even if they reteach or replay it, uh, which is also another ide ideal strategy, even, even if they do that, it's, it's only going to be part of a, uh, maybe a class period or something. Sure. Where there's also the long-form games like Minecraft, which you could take 
you know, an entire semester and teach right. and, and, and beyond. <laughs> right. So, again, it all depends, and we can't, we can't make a blanket statement as in all of these games, this is exactly how to teach. Each one almost has to be like a case-by-case basis. Right. I'm starting to see learning games, um, like, for instance, down at the gaming pavilion that's here. Um, I'm starting to see them actually incorporate that and think about what the teachers need yeah. and how to plan for it and prepare for it. So, Anyway, but uh, there are some really fun games. Uh, t- if you get a chance... I know you're doing a lot of interviews. Take a look at the game-based pavilion. It's, it's great. The games, yep. it's going to blow your mind at what they're putting in there. Yeah, yeah. We, we've yeah. talked to most. Um, Mitch, Mitch uh, Weisberg Mitch, yes. is a good buddy of ours, yes. and we keep up with everything that's going on. And we talked to Odium, mm-hmm. and we've talked to... Uh, the um, Bear. A 3D, 3D Bear. bear. 3D yeah. Bear, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, lots of cool stuff's going on. Odium, wow. I yeah, mean, I haven't even gotten to see them all yet. Yep. Whoa. I mean, that one's really hardcore. I mean, we, that's... Uh, th- that virtual, you know, and talking about quests, and, mm-hmm. and they built that that piece to where, uh, what was it, Tories versus, it, it's based on the Revolutionary War, right? and it's like, well, if the student doesn't quite get the concept of what it is to be a Tory, they send them on a side quest so that they learn that and come back into the game. Really interesting stuff. It's very personalized. Isn't very, it? very personalized. Very personalized. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We're, we're new age. Yes. Really cool it, stuff. It's a, very exciting. Uh, I, I wish I had it in my at my schools when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it would have yeah. changed the whole. So, um, if folks want to get in touch with you, um, mm-hmm. find out more. Uh, what's the best way to do it? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, definitely is probably the best way. It's uh, Ryan L. Shaw, capital R Y A N, uh, capital L, and then capital S C H A A F. Cool. Um, awesome. I'll be. Here. Um, I'm here. Just uh, you can also get a hold of me. I'm sure you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Not that anybody ever uses it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Twitter okay. Seems and, to be the educa- educational go-to for now. It absolutely is. Yeah. Okay. And real quick, they can get your book. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, through Solution Tree Press. Uh, it is game on. Um, it's uh, hard to find. There's also. Uh, Reinventing Learning for the Always On Generation through Solution Tree Press 2. That one is a, an award winning book. Oh, nice, awesome. man. Hey. Yeah, maybe I'll save it for another interview another day. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll get That'd you on the great. regular show one day. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be great. Listen, cool. fellas, thank you very much thank for interviewing me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it and good luck. You've been listening to a recorded conversation from EduTech Guys live coverage of FETC 2018. For more information about EduTech Guys, visit edutechguys.com. And Thanks for listening.